Here we look at center of mass and centroids. We'll start off with a motivation of kind of what we mean by center of mass uh, and then move from there into how to compute center of mass for a bent wire or a, a curve. All right, so as a motivating example, let's suppose we have a bunch of boxes set out on a, a board um, and we want to figure out where the balancing point is. Okay, so we have a 2 kilogram box set at um, location negative 3, 1 kilogram at negative 2, 2 kilograms at 0, 4 kilograms at 2, and uh, 1 kilogram at 4. And what we're going to do, first of all, try to figure out how much mass we have. So let's go ahead and calculate the, the total mass. So total mass, we just add up all of the masses of our boxes. So 2 plus 1 plus... 2 plus 4 plus 1, and it uh, looks like we have a total mass of 10 kilograms, okay? So that's simple enough. Next thing I want to do is to try to start to figure out a balance point. I'm going to add up all of the x-coordinates with a, a kind of importance attached to each coordinate according to how much um, weight or, or mass is there. And this is called a moment. Um, so we're going to take a moment, um, moment about the uh, x x the uh, sorry the y axis or in other words the line x equals 0 and uh, this is called m sub y for a moment about the y axis or m sub x equals 0 to denote what we're finding kind of a symmetry about and so here i want to take each of the uh, each of the masses in this case maybe 2 and multiply it by its corresponding x-coordinate, so negative 3. So this box here, 2-kilogram um, box, is located at negative 3, so I, I have taken care of that one. The next box has 1 kilogram in it, it's located at negative 2, and then we keep on doing this. Each, um, each box, we record it times its x-coordinate, which, again, is a kind of way of thinking about this is, we're saying the mass tells us how important that corresponding coordinate is. So if you notice in our sum of kind of weighted x coordinates, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4 all appear because we have boxes there. Um, other coordinates don't. Um, since, like, for instance, there's no box there at 3, um, we could add in 0 times 3, Right, because there's no mass at 3, but that doesn't doesn't do anything for our sum, so we'll, we'll not include that. It's almost more confusing than helpful. All right, so we have a weighted sum of x-coordinates, kind of signed distances away from x equals 0. They're weighted distances. And, uh, well, let's go ahead and add this up. We get negative 6 minus 2 plus 0 plus 8 um, plus 4, and the thing comes out to be a total of 4. And this would have units uh, kilogram meters. Right. Now, finally, what is the center of mass? Center of mass is a, a weighted average of x-coordinates. So it's the moment over mass. Right? It's the kind of weighted sum of x-coordinates divided by the total mass. And in our case, we get 4 tenths, which is 0.4. And if you notice, we've drawn a little arrow right there, that would be our balancing point. And so if you could, if you had these boxes laid out like that on a board, if you put a, a little wedge right here, they should balance right there. Okay. Now let's see how to, um, how to get, get at uh, center of mass for a more general situation. In this case, a center of mass uh, for a bent wire. Or a curve. Right? So suppose you have some sort of um, object, maybe uh, I'll continue saying wire. You have a wire bent in some shape C, and so it's it, it has some thickness and depth to it, but it's it's thin enough that it, it's you know essentially a one-dimensional kind of object. What we're gonna do is uh, come up with some function, we'll call this a lowercase delta. This will be our, our density function. So it would have units uh, mass per unit length. 
tangent, so there's our density function. First task would be to find the total mass of our wire. So let's imagine that we grab a, a really kind of small chunk of this. If, um, if we take a small enough chunk, then um, our, our density should be roughly constant. So we, we'll treat it as if it's a number and not, not a function. And uh, if we do that, so that's, that's the density for that chunk. So it's some particular fixed number because we're picking such a small chunk, the density doesn't really vary. The next thing would be how much wire have we grabbed. And so let's use ds to denote a, a little chunk of arc length. And if we do that, so ds is kind of how, how much wire we have there, then we multiply those two together, mass per unit length times length. This would be a mass... Um, of our chunk. So we have a, a nice little rough approximation of how much mass that chunk of wire takes up. And then as we do with these sorts of problems, we should take um, our mass for a, a small chunk and we should add that up along the whole curve, which we add up things by integrating. And so um, we get that the total mass Is, is just the integral along the curve um, of, the, of the density function with respect to arc length. Okay. And we could make this more formal, but that should be good enough. Um, now we need moments. So we need the moment uh, about the dot dot dot. Let's start off with yz plane. This would be the same thing as um, the equation x equals zero. Okay. We'll call that m sub yz, or m sub x equals 0. And then we play the same game, right? We have that uh, if we take a small enough chunk, it has there's that much mass attached to that chunk. That chunk, if we're in a small enough chunk, it has roughly the same x, y, and z coordinates everywhere along that chunk. So... In particular, its x coordinate we can just treat as a particular x, right? Then we want this is giving us a weighted x coordinate, and we want to add that up along our whole curve. And so there you go, you have x delta ds is your moment about the y z plane. And then we do the same thing for y and z. So the moment about the x z plane that's y equals zero that would be m sub x z, m sub y equals zero. This would be the integral of y delta ds. And then um, the xy plane, this would be z equals 0, would be m sub xy, m sub z equals 0. In other words, the integral along c of z delta ds. Right? And those are giving you weighted sums of x, y, and z coordinates respectively. And then finally, the center of mass That would be our x bar, y bar, z bar, the, the middle of this thing. And for that, we just take the weighted average of all the x coordinates. So that's the moment about the y, z plane divided by total mass. And then correspondingly for the other coordinates as well. Okay, And notice it is kind of confusing, again, that you're computing a moment um, computing an x-coordinate of the center of mass, but its label, the moment is labeled with m sub yz, but keep in mind that it's, that there's a reason behind that name. Maybe if we stuck with the other name, m sub x equals zero, it'd be easier to understand why those labels are that way. Okay, one touch-up thing to talk about is the notion of a centroid, okay? So a centroid, this is what we mean by that is we have constant density. So this would be where um, delta is not uh, is not varying along a curve, but it's just a number. We want to kind of consider what happens when you have constant density. If you take the integral along your curve, you have so let's let's just focus on the x coordinate here. You have the moment about the uh, uh, yz plane, and then divided by the total mass. Well, if uh, delta is really a constant, if this guy is a constant, 
line integrals have the same properties as definite integrals. You can pull constants out. And so what we end up with then is uh, that the deltas cancel. And so if you are in the situation of constant density, you may as well just set delta equal to 1 right? and, and not worry about it. So you can scratch delta out of all of your formulas. And uh, in this case, uh, where you have a constant density, or in other words, you can just set delta equal to 1, you end up with a centroid. And what a centroid is, it's really it's a geometric center um, of our curve. One thing to note is if, if we do that, if we set delta equal to 1, then our total mass would be 1 ds, and that right there, think of plug in a parameterization, what is this, what is this? This is just the arc length of our curve. Right? So if we're computing a centroid, we should know that the, the mass, that part of it, is actually the same thing as arc length. And uh, maybe if we know something about our curve, if it's like a chunk of a circle or something, we may actually be able to skip that integral and just write down the answer. Okay, now let's uh, conclude with a, uh, an example. So let's find the um, centroid of um, a helix, a particular helix. In particular, let's have our curve be parameterized by uh, 3 cosine t, uh, 3 sine t, 4t, our old friend, where the numbers work out pretty nice. And we'll go from negative 2 pi to um, 4 pi. So we're going to go around this helix uh, three full times. And uh, if we do that, well, first of all, we need to compute the length of the derivative, and we've done that before. I'll just say that that comes out to be 5. Uh, the derivative of r is negative 3 sine, comma, 3 cosine, comma, 4. And then you work out the length of that, and it just everything collapses down, and you end up with 5. Okay, so mass, our total mass, we want the integral of 1 ds, where we're finding the this is just the arc length of our helix. And so we're going to end up integrating from negative 2 pi to 4 pi. And the length of the derivative, our, our arc length element here, is just 5. So we end up with 5 dt. That's our, coming f that's our ds. And so this is just um, 5 times the length of that interval. That's 5 times 6 pi, which is 30 pi. So there's our, our total mass. Next, we need our moments. Okay, let's do the moment about the yz plane. And we have the integral... Um, of x ds. Remember, we're, we're f centroid, so we're thinking of constant density, and delta is 1, so we just have x ds. Delta doesn't have to show up here. And uh, let's go ahead and set up our line integral. Okay, we have integrate from negative 2 pi to 4 pi, because that's the domain for our parameterization. And um, x, the x component is 3 cosine of t, and uh, so we'll write that down. There's our x. And then ds is 5 dt. So what do we get? We, well, we integrate through cosine its full period three times. Now remember, what does cosine look like? Well, here's one period of cosine 0 to 2 pi. Remember that you have this is a 1. This would be negative 2 here. This would be 1. Anyway, the area above and below um, cancels out, and so this just ends up being 0, because we're going through a full period of cosine 3 times, so we get 0 plus 0 plus 0. Um, likewise, if you go look at the uh, moment about the xz plane, y ds, the exact same thing happens, because for um, if we look at y's component function, it's 3 sine. And the same thing happens. We go through three full periods of sine. We get zero. Finally, um, the y, oops, the xy moment about the xy plane, we have z ds. This one is more interesting. We have the integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi. And uh, z is 4t. ds is 5 dt. So we have the integral from negative 2 pi to 
4 pi of 20 t dt. Well, that's 10 t squared evaluated at uh, 4 pi negative 2 pi, right? The integral of t squared is 1 half, as of t is 1 half t squared. So plugging that in, we get 160 pi squared minus um, 40 pi squared. I calculate that right. Don't trust myself. All right, and so this moment comes out to be 120 pi squared. All right, now we're ready to put everything together. And so the center of mass, or the centroid in this case, for the helix is, and we have moment over mass, moment over mass, and moment over mass, which comes out to be 0, 0, and then 120 pi squared over 30 pi squared comes out to be 4 pi. All right, it's always a good idea when you finish a problem like this to ask yourself, or really any problem, is this a reasonable answer? And it turns out for a, hel a circular helix like this, you could you actually could have guessed the answer without working things out. So let's consider why that's the case. Now here's a kind of rough drawing. All right, so we go around the helix um, one, once, twice, three times, and notice that kind of right down the the middle of the helix, that's the uh, z-axis. It makes a lot of sense that x bar and y bar should be zero. It's it's really perfectly balanced uh, around those. So that those first two coordinates seem very plausible, but actually even the z coordinate seems reasonable if you consider the span of things. Notice that the the final component of our parameterization for the helix is four t. When you plug in the extreme values for t, you end up with negative eight pi because that's negative 2 pi times 4, and then you have 4 pi times 4, that's 16 pi. So the length of the span here in the z direction is 24 pi. If you go from negative 8 pi up half of 24 pi, up 12, you get 4 pi. Or if you go 8 pi down from, I say 12 pi down from 16 pi, you get 4 pi. So 4 pi is right there in the middle. And uh, so that, that really confirms our answer. It's a very reasonable one to have arrived at.